It is important to consider why yoga therapy specifically has direct implications and value to the whole practice of meditation. It really goes back to where the practice of Hatha Yoga was originally codified and even conceived in many ways. And that goes back to the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, which was the original treatise on Hatha Yoga, and Hatha Yoga being the practice of asana, of posture, and breathing techniques, pranayama. And the traditional take on the practice of Hatha Yoga in this text starts out with the statement that everything that's about to ensue in this practice or in these practices is all for the sole reason of bringing the student and the disciple to the place of Raja Yoga, the practice of Raja Yoga, which is a classical term for really the practice of meditation and that contemplative path that is considered to be the ascending staircase, if you will, that brings people to this conscious evolution. And so in our modern day culture, we've had really an, a, a growing, a burgeoning field of yoga therapy that's really expanded in a dramatic way, especially within the last 10 years and even in the last five years, because at the same time, we've had a growing incidence of injury and trauma that stem from the sedentary lifestyle, the modern prevailing sedentary lifestyle of simply sitting around too much, everything from sitting around in our homes to our vehicles and our transportation and at work. And all of this has created conditions in people's bodies that the world really hasn't seen before. And this is really why we're having a healthcare or health crisis all over the planet, essentially. And so the relationship between the body and the mind has been the central topic of discussion from the traditions of yoga and Buddhism, where we receive the, the education about meditation in the first place. And this is now validated by a lot of scientific research, where it is shown that the ability for the mind to be clear and focused has everything to do with having our physical body in balance. And there's a interesting subject there to think about in that there's really no hard line that even scientists, a lot of experts draw between where the brain ends and the body begins or where the mind ends and the body begins. And there's a lot of talk about who we are as human beings as being more of embodied. There's an embodied cognition concept that, that we hear about and that we can read about that's being researched in the sense that the brain, the operating system that allows us to be conscious in the first place is actually stated, is seated in the body itself. And one can see this when we just really conceive of the nervous system, you know, and everybody knows that the nervous system is, the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord, but then there's the peripheral nervous system. And now the relationship actually between the peripheral and the central nervous system shows to be very codependent, that one really cannot function without the other. It doesn't even make sense to have one in the absence of the other. And as we, you know, with modern technology, scientific medical technology, as we see now that the nervous system is a entirely all pervasive system in the body, we actually start to understand that the mind and essentially consciousness is as well all pervasive throughout the entire body. And therefore, when people get yoga in their life and they practice and they start to wake up and enhance their own physical anatomical selves, they actually get a lot of relief. They get a lot of mental, cognitive, emotional relief that really makes a lot of sense. And 
the ability to help students overcome these certain, especially modern setbacks allows people to get a little bit of space, a little bit of a break between their health challenges and their actual clarity, their state of mind. And so when we help people overcome these challenges, we actually give them an avenue for more mental focus, for more clarity. And from that, what happens is people naturally start to open up to even the concept of meditation and contemplation. And as a yoga therapist, one of the most rewarding things that I see happen is people have, and they get relief from their physical symptoms, and all of a sudden they start to open up to their passions in life, to their interests, and actually the, the curiosity and complexity that the human mind in a way evolved to, to take on. And I think that this is a really beautiful way that we can lead people to meditation where their interest in it is actually bought initially, not from convincing anybody that this is good for them, but because once they clear up enough of this physical clutter that is cluttering so many of our bodies, once they clean that up, they actually start to be interested in the things in life that have substance, things in life of that psychological or philosophical nature that meditation is pushing students to, it's pushing all of us towards.